What is up guys, it is RSC6414 here, back with another video, this time I'm reviewing TNA Lockdown Pay-Per-View 2014, overall I gotta say, good pay-per-view, thumbs up TNA, bravo, uh, I, I have always been a big supporter of TNA, sometimes for the past few years, it's been disappointing, with an occasional decent pay-per-view. Lockdown is generally pretty good. This one was good as well. And uh, no disappointment here. It exceeded my expectations. I was going in with kind of not knowing what to expect. And I came out happy. So that was a good thumbs up there. And let's go ahead and <clears throat> get to the review. The first thing we have is the three-on-three -three, uh, interpromotional tag team match. You have Wrestle 1 versus TNA. On Wrestle 1, you have the Grey Muda, uh, Sonata, the X Division champion, and Nakamui, and uh, Yana Nakamui, who's also on uh, Wrestle 1, versus TNA, Chris Saban, Bad Influence, Christopher Daniels, and Kazarian. This match was a good opener. Fast paced action, pretty good for what it was worth. Uh, Grey Muda hit a Shining Wizard on Daniels. He tagged in. Uh, uh, Sonata, who did a moonsault off the top rope on Christopher Daniels for the one, two, three, and Wrestle One ends up being victorious here with the moonsault by Sonata and getting the winning pinfall on Christopher Daniels. I thought maybe there was a chance TNA could win. I thought more likely TNA would win just because it's a TNA pay per view, but Wrestle One won, which I don't have a problem with. Good match, good way to kick off the show, overall great. I would give that match three stars out of five. The next thing we had was Dixie Carter come out. She kind of uh, stood on the entrance ramp. Uh, Rockstar Spud was in the ring, introduced her. She talked about later tonight how she has an insurance policy and how she has, uh, she basically says some type of stuff that heels would say, like she's the queen, why is King James the king of Miami when she should be the queen and everything of Miami, she's better than LeBron, like yada yada, she started TNA from the bottom, and now look where it is, not MVP, she basically just gives her uh, heel, uh, her heel speech that no one really cared about to the fans, um, the crowd was whatever, and it wasn't really that, they weren't really into the show, that was the only complaint I had about it, they really didn't seem to care, uh, n not all TNA crowds are like that, but it seems like the majority of them are, unfortunately, but uh, what are you going to do? Uh, the Lethal Lockdown match, they had a good pop, but that was about it. Uh, but yeah, Dixie Carter was cutting a promo. She basically talks about how she has an insurance policy to make sure everything goes her way tonight for the main event, and uh, she has a guest ref lined up too, and uh, we will find that out in the main event is what she says. Then the next thing we have is Samuel Shaw versus... Mr. Anderson. Anderson. And uh had to do it, you know, you can't you can't introduce Mr. Anderson without the microphone, but uh even if it is imaginary. But Samuel Shaw versus Mr. Anderson, back and forth action. Christy Hemi came out ringside later in the match. Uh, Mr. Anderson hit Mike Check finisher on Samuel Shaw, whose head nailed the turnbuckle pad. The ref got knocked out in the middle of the match. Mr. Anderson would hop over the cage. Both feet would hit the ground. And what does Christy Hemi do? She gets closest to the cage, where there's a big hole in the cage, I guess, to film and uh, get a better view of the uh, action in the ring. And she gets right to the hole. Samuel Shaw grabs her and pulls her inside the cage. Mr. Anderson goes back inside of the ring. He fights off Samuel Shaw in time for Christy Hemi to escape. And Samuel Shaw would eventually uh, lock in his uh, rear naked choke kind of lock thing that he has. I don't really know the name of it. I know it's a submission. He just kind of chokes people out at the point where they pass out. Mr. Anderson would pass out. Samuel Shaw would exit the ring. Both feet would hit the floor. And the, the ref wakes up and gives Samuel Shaw the win because he saw Shaw's feet touch the floor, not Anderson's. Therefore, Samuel Shaw defeats Mr. Anderson via a screwy finish. To me, in my opinion, 
This was probably my least favorite match of the night. It was just whatever, kind of stupid stuff if you ask me, but a good way to progress the feud. Overall grade, I'd give this match 2.25 out of 5. Two and a quarter stars out of 5. The next match we had, or no, it was EC3's Open Challenge. Uh, since Kurt Angle couldn't compete, Ethan Carter III had a issue to Open Challenge to anybody on the TNA roster. And who comes out? Bobby Lashley is back. Bobby Lashley comes back. And uh, EC3's like, um, you're not on the TNA roster, Bobby. You can't wrestle me. You're not on the roster. I'm sorry, but you can't wrestle me. And then Bobby won't leave the ring. EC3 tries to punch Bobby. Bobby counters, slams EC3, and then hits a vicious spear on Ethan Carter the third. Vintage Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley gets the advantage over EC3. EC3 would retreat from the ring and leave Bobby Lashley standing tall in the ring. I was marking out so much. I'm a big fan of Bobby Lashley. I'm glad he's back on TV here. And uh, you can see him on a regular weekly basis. Welcome back, Bobby Lashley. Uh, he was obviously in WWE and TNA before. So welcome back to Bobby Lashley. That was awesome. I marked out. I did not see that coming one bit, but I'm glad uh, that he came back at this uh, pay-per-view. So good. Things are moving up for TNA. They're looking better and better by uh, the weeks, it seems like. So, yeah. That was probably one of my favorite parts of the whole... That was definitely the best segment. Favorite, one of my favorite parts of the whole pay-per-view. The next thing we had was the debuting Tigre Uno, a.k.a. Ultimate Tiger. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. I really like him. I've seen him a couple t a couple matches before this one. He faced off against Manic here. Again, all the matches here at the Lockdown Pay-Per-View this year all happened inside of a steel cage. This match was back and forth. Tigre Uno, just some Lucha-style tactics. Some, it was an entertaining match for what it was worth. Just kind of to get Tigre Uno some exposure and uh, try and get him over with the fans is basically what this match was. Tigre Uno would eventually hit the, uh, they called it the uh, saber tooth Splash, which is really the Phoenix Splash is what he hit. But they, his name is Finisher is the saber tooth Splash because he's got two little saber tooth things hanging from his mask. He pins Manic for the one, two, three. Tigre Uno defeats Manic here with the... Uh, Sabretooth Splash, a.k.a. Phoenix Splash. Good match for us worth, short but entertaining. Uh, the overall grade, I would give this match 2.5 out of 5. 2.5 out of 5. The next match we had was Gunner versus James Storm in a last man standing match. And this match was one of the best matches of the night. Really good, back and forth action, no complaints here. Just two former tag partners hate each other's guts just going out in the ring nothing better than that uh, of course James Storm screwed Gunner over for his TNA World Heavyweight Championship shot two weeks ago in the match versus Magnus and turning James Storm heel and ever since then they've kind of been feuding for the last week or two and uh, this match was good back and forth there was a couple spots obviously in a last man standing match they get up at eight or nine they get to the top rope, and Gunner has two chairs lined up kind of right here, like this far apart. He superplexes James Storm, who smashes through both chairs. Just They kind of go like this, and then burn. Smashes James Storm right through the two steel chairs. It's huge superplex. Gunner gets up at the nine count. James Storm doesn't get up at the nine, doesn't get up in time for the ten count. And Gunner is your winner of the match here. No surprise to me. A lot of people are picking James Storm. I could see, I could have seen James Storm, but it seems like every time, if you have like a tag team partner who turns on someone, the face generally gets revenge. That's what I was expecting to happen here, and it did. So Gunner picks up the win. Good match. One of the better matches of the night. I thought overall grade. I would give this match. 3.5 out of 5. Again, 3.5 out of 5 is what I'd give the match between Gunner and James Storm. The next match we had, Madison Rain defending her Knockouts Championship versus Gail Kim. This match was good for knockout standards. Uh, women's wrestling was pretty good. I was entertained throughout most of the match. No complaints, really, to be honest. Basically, what happened is uh, Madison Rain hit a spear off the top rope. It was kind of sloppy and botched somewhat but 
hey, it really wasn't a spear to me, but that's what the commentators called it. So they say, I guess I'll go with Madison Rain hits the spear off the top rope, pins Gail Kim for the one, two, three, and Madison Rain retains the Knockouts Championship here. I really thought Madison Rain might drop the title here to Gail Kim because it seems like every pay-per-view there's always a title change. Gail Kim did not pick up the title here, and Madison Rain wins. I'm not too com too mad about that because Gail Kim's won the Knockouts title more times than I can really remember in the past year and a half. But uh, good match for what it was worth. Overall grade, I'd give this match 2.5 out of 5. 2.5 out of 5. The next match we had was for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Magnus, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, taking on Samojo in a submission match. The only way you can win is via submission, tap out, or knockout. A Samojo style match they announced a couple weeks ago. This match was good. Back and forth, both men got busted open during the match. And then all of a sudden, Samoa Joe has his Coquina clutch locked in on Magnus. Magnus is fading. It looks like Magnus may tap. And all of a sudden, a hand pops up from under the ring. The mat busts open. And he, the guy's hand pulls Samoa Joe underneath the ring the, the, uh, just before Magnus is about to tap. So the match is still going. Then uh, Samoa Joe climbs up from the hole and he's like this. He's got blood going down his face. He looks like he just rose from the dead or something. It was pretty cool if you ask me. I think it'd uh, be a pretty damn cool profile picture or something. But uh, he came up like that. He was like this. And then Magnus is staring at him like that. Just, it was pretty cool. You'd have to see it to believe it. But uh, back and forth. And Samojo is about to uh, go at Magnus when all of a sudden... Abyss comes out from underneath that black hole, hits Samoa Joe with Janice. If you don't know who Janice is, it's the spiked barb, it's the spiked uh, clubbing bat thing that Abyss carries to the ring. Hits Samoa Joe, black hole slam on Samoa Joe. Then Magnus locks in a rear naked choke on Samoa Joe, and Samoa Joe fades out. Magnus retains the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Via, uh, I guess you'd call it knockout, considering uh, Samojo went unconscious with the uh, rear naked choke. Magnus retains. Abyss turns heel in the process. He hugs Magnus. They celebrate. So it looks like Abyss is now on team, uh, is now on Dixie's side instead of uh, MVP. So looks like Mag Abyss turns heel, Magnus retains, good match for what it was worth, sloppy, but uh, the overall grade I'd give this match 2.75 out of 5, 2 and a 3 quarter stars out of 5. And then we have our main event, the lethal lockdown match, Team MVP versus Team Dixie. I'm going for Team MVP because I can't stand Dixie Carter, I hate her Dixie Lane match. It's Dixie Carter, and I'm the worst Owner of all time. But that was a terrible impression, I know. But um, I could have cared less, really, if uh, if uh, Dixie Carter left TNA. But Team MVP versus Team Dixie. Like I said, 4-on-4 four four on Team MVP. You have Davey Richards, Eddie Edwards of the Wolves, MVP, and what was supposed to be Jeff Hardy. At the, when that promo was cut by Dixie later, earlier on in the night, she said she banned Jeff Hardy from the arena. He can't enter. Uh, but they would find a replacement. So all the members, just when they're all about to enter, here comes Willow the Wisp, a.k.a. Jeff Hardy's new gimmick. He debuts on top of the cage. He goes off the top, takes out, I can't remember which member of Team Dixie he took out, but they're all a Team MVP standing on top. Dixie Carter comes out, she says, Here's my insurance policy, a.k.a. my special guest ref. She brings out Bully Ray. I'm a huge Bully Ray fan. I'm thinking, oh, God, Bully Ray's... I like Bully Ray, but he's going to screw Team MVP out of this and Team Dixie's going to win, and we're going to have to go through Dixie Carter's bullshit for another five months, perhaps, till Bound for Glory, and then or Slammiversary at the earliest. And then I'm thinking... Please, just don't screw him over. Uh, but uh, towards the end of the match, Bobby Roode and Bully Ray are arguing. Bobby Roode pushes Bully Ray. Bully Ray 
power bomb or power slams Bobby Roode. Then Team MVP hits the uh, drive-by kick finisher on Bobby Roode for the one, two, three, and Team MVP defeats Dixie Carter via the drive-by kick finisher on MVP, who had some sick uh, Miami Hurricanes themed colors tonight with his attire. That was pretty cool. But, uh, that's just a side note, but. Team MVP picks up the win. After the match, Dixie Carter's furious. Team MVP, gain, MVP gains full control of TNA. That was the stipulation. He gains full control of TNA with the win. No more Dixie. 305. It is MVP time. Let's go. But uh, good match. Good pay-per-view. No complaints. After at, at the end, Bully Ray power bombs Bobby Roode through a table, and uh, Bully Ray stands tall at the end of the night with Dixie Carter shrieking at the top of her lungs, uh, with Rockstar Spud holding her back. Team MVP is victorious. Bully Ray may have turned face here in the process. Abyss turns heel. Bobby Lashley comes back. Action packed. Lots of swerves, and uh, good pay per view. The overall grade I would give this pay per view. 7.75 out of 10. 7 and a 3 quarter stars out of 10. Good pay-per-view TNA. Bravo is all I've got to say. Two thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, 7.75, 7 and 7 3 quarters out of 10 is the overall grade to give this pay-per-view. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos and subscribe. Hopefully there will be a Raw review tomorrow. Thanks, guys. And, uh, yeah, have a good night. Hope you enjoyed the pay-per-view.